Hello everyone, Movie Jack is in touch and today I will tell you about the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Roger, pull yourself together. Well, how long can you drive a nonsense scene? The action takes place in Hollywood in 1947. The picture begins with the title credits of the short animated film Samson Skukin Smelled Fried, in which the main character of the film, the anthropomorphic rabbit Roger and baby Herman, take part, in fact, not a baby, but a dwarf. Roger, according to the plot, is left to look after Herman while his mother goes to the barber shop. The kid gets out of the playpen and goes to the kitchen, where he tries to risk his life to get to the cookie jar standing on the refrigerator. Roger, distracted for a while, discovers Herman's disappearance and tries to return him to the arena, while he himself gets into the same trouble from which he is trying to protect the baby. When the refrigerator falls on him, birds begin to circle around Roger's head, the director's command to stop is heard. And it turns out that the whole scene took place on the set, and instead of birds, Roger had to put stars in the script. Unhappy with Roger's absent-mindedness, studio owner Maroon Cortunes hires a private detective Eddie Viant, who is experiencing some difficulties with alcohol addiction, for the next case. Rumor has it that Rabbit's wife, Jessica Rabbit, a cartoon femme fatale, has an affair on the side. Maroon wants to provide Roger with evidence of treason, hoping, oddly enough, that this will help Rabbit concentrate on work. Then there is the murder of the tycoon Marvin Acme, the owner of the company to Nemeltown, and later someone kills Marwan. It was with Marvin that Jessica met, spending time playing Ladushki, harmless to human eyes, and Roger Rabbit is the first to fall under suspicion. He has a motive for murder and no alibi, and the evidence found at the crime scene indicates that the killer was a cartoon. Judge Rock from the Mulltown District Supreme Court and his henchmen, a gang of ferrets from the Cartoon Patrol, are on Roger's trail. Contrary to popular belief that it is impossible to kill a cartoon, Rock managed to find an effective remedy, a mixture of acetone, benzene and turpentine. Syrup, as the creator himself called it, is easily capable of dissolving any cartoon, and therefore Roger, despite his cartoon nature, faces a very real death. The judge said that he intended to end the anarchy, and demonstrated the effect of the deadly mixture by dissolving a cartoon shoe that did not want to go back into the shoe box. The only person who can help Roger prove his innocence is Eddie Valiant. At the same time, the main difficulty is that the option itself has been exactly offended by the cartoon for some time. Once upon a time, he and his brother Teddy Valiant ran a detective agency, and every inhabitant of Mulltown knew that if you were in trouble, there was only one place where they would always help you. But a few years ago, during the investigation of a robbery, an unknown tune dropped a piano directly on them from the 15th floor. Eddie got off with a broken arm, and his brother died. Nevertheless, the option is still taken to help Roger after he says that there is no fair trial for the multi, and admits that he is afraid to sink into the syrup. In the course of the investigation, the variant comes to the conclusion that Roger actually became a pawn in a major game and the main events actually relate to the will of the murdered Marvin Acma, in which he was going to transfer the cartoon town to the tunes for life. A certain company, Clove Leaf Industry, buying up land plots throughout the city, offered the municipality a decent sum for Mulltown, and now begins to suspect that Judge Rock is hired by this company and is personally interested in ensuring that the will is not found before midnight. It later turns out that Judge Rock is the sole owner of Liv's Clove. He saw the project documentation, according to which the municipality is going to lay a motorway near Mulltown, and plans to enrich itself by building up the territory adjacent to the future motorway with fast food restaurants, gas stations and other things. And now, if the will is not found in time, the city authorities will sell Mulltown to the Clove Liv Company, and Judge Rock will destroy the city with all its inhabitants, pouring syrup over it in order to carry out his plan. At the Acme warehouse, Rock and his henchman Ferret spray syrup from a hydraulic cannon, trying to kill the captive Roger and Jessica, but the variant intervenes in time and defeats the ferrets, literally laughing them to death. During the final match, it turns out that Judge Rock is also a cartoon, after an asphalt skating rink has passed over him, he remains alive and well and only flattens out. Moreover, he was the one who once killed Teddy Valiant, and now, Marvina, Akma and Maruna. In the fight of the deadline, Eddie knocks down the valve from a 15-ton container with syrup, the judge is sprayed with a jet under pressure, and he dies, melting in a puddle of solvent invented by him. All that remains of him is a damaged disguise, who he really was remains a mystery. The cannon fails, 
breaks through the wall of the warehouse and enters Mulltown, where it is hit by a passing train. There is also Marvin Acme's will, written in Disappearing and Reappearing Inc., Roger used the will as a blank sheet to write Jessica's love note on it, and thus he passes the cartoon into eternal use to the cartoons, who enthusiastically perform the song Smile Darn I Smile. Promised Guys Thank you all for watching. If you like the format of super short retellings of films, then subscribe to the channel and support with a like. Also leave in the comments the name of the film, the retelling of which you want to see next.